Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and of course, uh, this is Shackleton. I've had a very nice, uh, relax relaxing, uh, comfortable break over Christmas. And, uh, you know, as you are aware, I took a break from uh, my climate change uh, educational videos. Um, had a very busy December, of course, uh, going to the COP25 in um, Madrid. Spain and uh, you know did a number of different press conferences there which and uh, did some really interesting um, work on on uh, answering some kids questions about climate change so um, you know although I've taken a bit of a break from my videos about every other day uh, for the last few weeks I've been on Canadian uh, uh, mainstream uh, television stations including CTV, which is the largest privately owned uh, TV station in Canada, as well as on uh, CBC, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. And the topics being of the Australian fires and, uh, you know, they've been de developing and worsening, um, you know, and being in the news for uh, a long time. So, you know, I had a lot of different commentary on that and I'll, I'll do some videos uh, soon, you know, show some clips from some of these press conferences, etc. But right now, I want to talk about the Arctic and the changes in albedo in the Arctic. I've often said that the reflectivity of the Arctic has decreased from 52% to 48% between 1979 and 2011. You know, that's a very significant darkening of the Arctic. And that means there's more solar absorption in the Arctic, which then leads to the feedbacks, which go to you know, speed up the loss of Arctic sea ice and also of snow cover on the land. So I'm going to talk about where those numbers actually come from and, uh, you know, talk about some of the latest research on this topic. But first I'll talk about some of the, the background. So this is my website, paulbeckwith.net, and uh, there were a bunch of interviews. I did, um, there was uh, an interview with a group Called science, um, called science for Peace in Toronto. They originally formed because of the um, dangers of the Cold War to get rid of nuclear. And most of their work is uh, climate change. So Meta Spencer, you know, has been a person who's worked with this group, um, Scientists for Peace, for many, many years. And she interviewed me while I was at the COP. And this is the CTV interview recently and the Radio EcoShock which is always a wonderful interview um, with, um, with Alex Smith, who runs Radio EcoShock. Okay, so you can have a look at that information here. And on Twitter, um, late last year, Roger Person, okay, uh, posted this, observational determination of albedo decrease caused by vanishing Arctic sea ice. Basically, the idea that the drop in albedo from 0.52 to 0.48, the reflectivity between 80 and 90 degrees north between, between um, 1979 and 2011, when you average it over the globe, you get 0 0.21 plus or minus 0 0.3, 0 0.03 watts per square meter averaged over the globe. So the question is, is when we have uh, six months of blue ocean event, or even a few months, you know, what will that do to the albedo change in the Arctic and what will that do to the um, increased warming in the Ar Arctic? So those questions, those are great questions. So that sort of got me triggered to thinking about the Arctic and the albedo loss. Um, and uh, so I put it into, into this video, probably one after this too. So this is on my uh, Twitter feed. Um, it is the three interviews. Um, I've been reading some philosophy recently. There's this excellent book. It's called The Human Predicament, okay, by David Benatar, written in 19, um, 19, written in uh, 2017, so it's just a few years old. It's a candid guide to life's biggest questions, and there's a lot of interesting things um, in this book that do relate to climate change, so I'll be talking about them you know, over time, a couple, uh, you know, choice quotes that are in there. Ignorance is effortless. 
but knowledge usually requires hard work. You know, that's why ignorance abounds in, in our society, especially relating to climate change. And I, I will talk about Australia in great detail. Like I said, I've been in press conferences, you know, quite a few, you know, every other day. This is the maximum temperature in December, the anomaly. And look at, like, it's way off of the charts. And if you look at that, how off the charts it is, this is considered the normal now. This is a normal with 1.5 degrees of global warming, 2 degrees, 2.5, and 3. So, you know, but, you know, here we are this year, and what Australia is seeing will become quite normal at, a, you know, about 2.5 degrees Celsius, slightly above that. Um, so, you know, obviously we have a very, very serious uh, situation there. But what I did want to show you, well, many people may feel like this. Um, you see the little guy here, the little mouse here? you know, got stuck on an escalator. Hopefully one of these people don't step on him. You know, they turn him around and, and he'll, he'll get tired and then he'll be pulled off this end of the, of the uh, escalator. But what I wanted to show you here is uh, this uh, image here. This shows the average annual PO mass. This is the Arctic sea ice volume from 79 to including the 2019 year. Um, so this is the um, the the sea ice volume, uh, you know, okay. And this is, doesn't say that it's in, well, it's the annual average, okay. So it shows you how it's decreasing, you know, over time. But, in the, but the drop, you know, it wasn't linear or faster than linear. It slowed down here. So I've talked in some previous videos about why this may be happening, but it will, of course, warrant a lot more discussion um, and analysis. Of course, Arctic sea ice graphs is the go-to location. If you just Google Arctic sea ice graphs, you can see what the sea ice is doing right now. And what we can see is the extent is, has, um, is tracking very closely to the 2012-2013, which was the minimum uh, September um, sea ice extent. So that's the record. And, uh, you know, here we are uh, along this curve tracking it very closely. And if you go down further, um, I just want to show you some of the volume stuff. So this is a POMAS daily Arctic ice volume. Um, the red line here is 2019. So it's not the lowest year on record. Um, and, uh, you know, we can look at the trends. Um, and, uh, you know, if you go right to the bottom, of course, um, there's a good map here of the Arctic. You know, if you hear of names of places in the Arctic and you're not sure where they are, then just click on that. It's an excellent resource. So going to um, the, uh, you know, looking at the um, ice volume, this is the PO mass September minimum ice volume. And it shows a trend here, which is faster than linear. Um, and if that trend continues, it shows you we'll expect a blue ocean event by, you know, sometime about 2025, maybe a bit after that. If you take this black trend line for September, that's the green line in this case. And what you can see is these are all the different months. So all the different months, the sea ice volume is dropping. So when this hits zero, you know, the key point is that it starts pulling, it will pull other months down to zero. And then we have this blue ocean event when the Arctic greatly warms and the jet stream disruption will, will uh, get a lot worse. Um, so there's loads of graphs here, loads of different types of fits. This is what is known as a uh, Gompertz uh, fit, I believe, where, you know, if there's some uh, feedbacks that slow down the loss of ice and the, the, the curve could trend like this. Um, Okay, so there's lots of uh, curves and data here. Now, the question is, is what will happen? You know, what does the loss of Arctic sea ice, what does that do to the albedo or the reflectance in the overall Arctic? So this is a paper from, from PNAS 2014 that I'm going to talk about in detail because that's when you do a search for how the albedo changes. This is, this is the classic paper that comes up. So... This paper, the decline of the Arctic sea ice was documented in over 30 years. So by past satellites, devices, satellite instrumentation, the instruments are passive microwave observations. 
and the darkening of the Arctic and its amplification of global warming, it was hypothesized almost 50 years ago, but of course never verified with direct observations. Okay, but here there's direct observations and the Arctic planetary albedo has decreased from 0.52 or 52% of the light incoming shortwave radiation or light from the sun is reflected back upwards. It used to be 52% in 1979 and in 2011, it's dropped now to 48%. So there's an additional 4% of light that stays in the Arctic and that goes into heating the ice and melting the ice and, and also goes into absorption on the land, etc. That change of albedo, that darkening of the Arctic, corresponds to an additional 6.4 plus or minus 0 0.9 watts per square meter of solar energy input into the Arctic Ocean region since 1979. So that's a huge heating. If you average this over the globe, you get 0 0.21 watts per square meter. This albedo decrease corresponds to a forcing that is 25% as large as that due to the change in CO2 during this period. Okay, so from 1979 to 2011, CO2 increased, of course, in the atmosphere, and that caused warming of, of the globe. And this effect from the loss of reflectivity in the Arctic is about a quarter one quarter as large as that due to the change in CO2, which is a huge forcing. And of course, it's all in the Arctic. So of course, the Arctic warms like crazy. You know, the Arctic darkening reduces the albedo and causes warming. Now, the darkening is due to loss of sea ice and loss of snow cover, primarily due to loss of sea ice. And, you know, if as more and more sea ice was lost, the Arctic <coughs> darkened, uh, it darkens, but if there were, because of all the exposed water, there'll be more evaporation and that can create, you know, more clouds. So if the loss of sea ice was, was, um, w you know, if, if during the loss of sea ice, there were additional clouds created over the open ocean, then the albedo wouldn't change that much. Okay. Uh, but, uh, that the, the, uh, additional clouds are not, um, they're, they're not, there aren't too many additional clouds, in fact. The data on observations are showing that, no, the, the whole Arctic is darkening. The clouds aren't increasing to balance or counteract the loss of Arctic sea ice. So the Arctic's warmed nearly two degrees since the 70s. This temperature change is three times larger than the global mean. Um... The Arctic sea ice cover is retreated with the summer minimum sea ice extent decreasing by 40%. And this is not comp compensated by an increase in cloudiness. Okay, um, so let's look at the uh, diagrams so, in this paper. So here we have, so this is um, 2007 to 2011. This is the average sea ice concentration in those in that in those those five years in September, so you take the the sea ice configuration in September, you know in two thousand seven do the same thing in two thousand eight up to two thousand eleven those five years take the average this is what you get, and this is from the uh, the uh, microwave uh, satellite instrumentation. Now you look at the albedo. You measure the radiation going down. You measure the radiation coming up. You calculate the percentage, the difference, the amount reflected. So this is the albedo or reflectance. And this is averaged, you know, over the over this time period. And what you can see is, of course, where there's sea ice, there is higher reflectivity. And where there's open water, there's much lower um, reflectivity. Okay. Now, if you take the difference from 2007 to 2011, Okay, or if you take the sea ice in 2007 to 2011, the average, and then you minus the average from 2000 to 2004, you get this. Okay, so this is the red areas is where there's been a huge loss of sea ice on the outskirts. The blue area is a little bit of gain. Now, if you look at the clear sky albedo, so this is the albedo in the absence of clouds, you can see that the, the albedo is decreasing significantly up to 30% you know, absolute value 
absolute numbers in the region where there's less sea ice. So I'll continue this video. Thanks for listening.